Okay. Um, so tonight we have the Zoning Board of Appeals, August 10th, 2021 for the Town of Lansing. Um, on tonight's agenda, um, we have uh, approval of the minutes, which we are not going to do tonight. We're going to put that off to the next meeting. Um, and then we also have a public hearing and then uh, adjournment. Would you like us to open the meeting? Yes, please. Is there somebody like to second opening? Not a second. All those in favor of opening the meeting? Aye. Heather, you're going to have to tell me when you want to roll call or something. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'd uh, like to have a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make a motion to open the second. 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 Okay. Um, the public hearing is on the consideration of an appeal made by Amy Newman and Eric Clay on behalf of Newman Clay Revo Revocable Trust, 281 Bill, Tr Bill George Road, I'm oh, sorry, tax parcel number 24.4-2, located in the Lakeshore L1 with Lake Frontage Zoning District. The applicant is proposing to construct a 10 foot by 12 foot accessory building and is requesting a 30 foot area variance from Town of Lansing Land Use Ordinance Section 504, Schedule 2, which requires a 30 foot minimum yard setback from the shore of Puget Lake. This is a type two action for under seeker. Um, all those in favor of opening public hearing say aye. 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 Okay. So the public hearing is open. Um, would somebody from the applicant want to speak? Uh, in response to the comments from the board at the uh, our last appearance, we have made uh, some adjustment some adjustments. I apologize uh, to how we would like to proceed. I uh, did provide those uh, to the department uh, earlier this week. Was the board able to receive those? And forward those. Um, they are also on the front of the packet that I have with. Okay. We haven't been before this board before, we were before the planning board. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And can you tell me your name? I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. My name is uh, May Lovelace. Uh, I work for Sunnybrook Builders, who is assisting them with the project. Okay. Um, and this is the first time it's coming to the zoning board. Yes. So anything you've said <laughs> yes. or presented to the planning board is going to be completely new to us. Right. And that's why these papers differ from what went to the planning board, because we got feedback there that okay. resulted in our changing plans. So do you want to walk us through what you're proposing to do? So with the uh, new design, we are interested in taking advantage of an existing concrete pad uh, that was there prior to the purchase of the property. Uh, if you take a look in the packet, uh, there is an image from the uh, south side of that concrete pad demonstrating some deterioration. We would be interested in repairing the pad, stopping the deterioration, and stopping the material from going into the lake. We would then like to uh, forego building on the land and instead uh, rebuild the existing shed to uh, eliminate the uh, materials that are deteriorating um, and uh, bring them up into a better state, make it look a little bit nicer, be a little bit more secure for their belongings to protect them from the weather and the animals. And resolve a side, side setback issue. And, uh, thank you, yes, uh, on the north side, uh, the existing shed does exist within the 10 foot side yard setback. So we would like to eliminate that issue. It would still be within the front yard setback, but we'll be moving it out of the 10-foot side yard setback. Um, and uh, we would, uh, at this point, not be attaching anything to the ground. Our interest is in uh, repairing that pad and then using that to uh, set and attach the uh, existing shed, which we will 
rebuilt with, uh, you know, the, the better non-rotting materials. <coughs> on a 16-inch, uh, on 16, on 16 inch blo uh, blocks. Yes. So that means so that if the high water waves or whatever come in, it, it will not uh, disrupt the, or unsettle the building. So the height of this building, the newest proposal, is different than the previous one? Yes, the previous one was built on stilts back at the level with the landing that you see. Um, there was some uh, concern as to um, the... Uh, Being too close to the railroad right of way as well as blocking vision uh, from the neighbor's spot. So we reconfigured everything and put it above the high water mark on the pad. And the height of the building is now? I do have a couple of elevations that I was able to pull together this afternoon. Um, I have extra copies with me if the board would be interested in seeing them. It demonstrates the elevation, the heights, as well as indicates uh, the heights that we discovered when we went in with the rotary laser um, and indicates the height that each of those uh, existing pieces, the concrete pad, the deck, etc., cetera, um, were at at the time that they were measured on that date. And you, you have that? I do have copies of that. Um, I give you guys two copies. Yeah, John, can I ask you, are we looking at the same variance? <clears throat> no, I don't think we are now. I think that this has, this has actually changed, if you weren't clear on that. Um, hmm. although, this is... Although, although it's, it's, I mean, you were previously asking for a 30-foot variance, and it's only needed 30 feet. It's mm -hmm. still within that variance, yes. As far as our intention previously was to remove it from the side yard, eliminating the need for variance in that way, but it would fall within the front yard setback. This plan also falls within the front yard setback. Do you, are you aware of exactly how far within the front yard setback it is? Um, so it is built, uh, our intention is to build it uh, at that front edge of the cement pad. That is the water line. So typically, a zoning board of appeals gives a gives a pretty precise amount of relief. Uh, so if, if you could provide us with the exact setback, the exact area. An exact number, yes. We can certainly do that. Yeah. We can offer that. So at this point, we don't know how much of a variance. I, I think we have. I mean, it's, it's, it's zero. It. It's zero. It is, or, or literally an inch. I mean, it's it's at the front it's edge. Yeah. yeah. In order to have the stairs come down to the concrete pad and be able to enter the structure, we need that amount of space, which puts the structure right at the at the edge of the pad and behind the do the deck. Yes. Okay. So it's still a thirty foot. It's still a 30 so setback okay. issue, yes. But it's like zero yeah. feet. Right at that front. I see, given the higher property line. Right. <coughs> right, and the, the high water mark travels along the front edge of the concrete pad. So if you look at the elevations, there is an indication uh, for the elevation of the uh, laser level that we used. From that point, it was measured up and down for uh, the various limits which we have indicated on there. The uh, median high water uh, limit is, I believe, 383 and some change. And the top of the cement pad is 384 and some change. 384 and a half. Three, yeah. And, a half, yeah. and that is on the second, those high water marks on the second page. My, I guess one of my 
my questions is how the um, railroad right away fits into this picture given the information that came through this afternoon on, a, on Norfolk Southern and the, the company that leases the railroad now and how all this fits into the picture in terms of um, where you're at with with the railroad right away in so, order to even go ahead with this. Um, so the site was was marked and the railroad right of way ends. Um, <laughs> if you look, at, I can wipe. I can walk through. Um, there is a, a pin or a nail in the platform where the railroad right of way ends. That 33 right, feet. That 33 feet is right about here on the platform. Okay. Yeah, and so we're well in front of that. The issue is we can't get stairs down to the lower level without pushing stuff out. We have no way to go to the side because that puts us in the side yard. The building that is there currently sits in this spot right here, right here, right across the side yard set. Okay, so you're that's going as far. You're going out further. This is where the current one sits. Yes, that's where the current one sits. It actually crosses this. Okay. So what you're saying with this plan is that you don't need approval or some intervention from the railroad. We we don't need any approval from the railroad for this. <clears throat> the applicant may actually still need approval, not for the structure, but um, you, you're probably going to need approval to, for a crossing. We have a use, a historic use of the crossing, and we've got a letter from our attorney, I believe. Yep. addressing that issue there are existing sets of stairs both above and below the railroad tracks that have been continually in use with this property I, i'd advise you to contact the railroad um, as as part of the public here mm -hmm. we reached out to the railroad sure. they they expressed concern over you folks not having an official crossing so mm -hmm. And we, we were in contact. We were contact, in contact with them for several years, trying to get a um, a, 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 a lease on the property down below, and it was it was not, not for that, but just for, but the, just for the right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I could probably give you a contact. Sure. Thank you. Hi there, uh, my name is Drew Minson. I live, uh, I'm a resident, live next door to their property at 290 Bill George Road, just uh, to the north. And um, <clears throat> I was not aware that the design has completely changed. Um, I just I didn't get a notice until Friday afternoon about this, um, uh, that it was going to be on, at this, on the agenda for tonight. So. Um, a lot of my comments have to do with the previous design. However, a lot of them are still relevant. So, that, so I'd like to, I mean, and I've, I assume that you guys have read my, I've got two letters that I've sent. Um, I sent. The neighbors on the other side as well, the Zierings have, have submitted a letter objecting as well, and, and Eric Trotter as well. Um, a couple of things that, that I'd like to point out. Um, first of all, that. 281 is already in, on an, a sort of a non-conforming non lot. There are other reasons that it doesn't meet the area, uh, the zoning for the area. It's 63 percent less than the required area for in the zoning code. The the, the um, road frontage is only 50 feet instead of 75. The setbacks, obviously, this would be built at zero feet, not 30 feet, as required by the code. Um, but a couple of my main uh, things that, that keep coming up, they keep, uh, the, the applicants keep uh, calling this a storage uh, building. Uh, and they've indicated tonight, I think, that they want to replace the existing storage shed, which is about six feet from my house on the beach. My, my house is down on the beach. You can see on that site plan. So this new structure would be directly adjacent to my house. Their house is up 
above the railroad tracks and above the road, uh, their main house. So this would be another accessory building that, um, and, and if the new drawings are anything like the previous drawings, they show a fully insulated building, with electricity, uh, big windows, so it, it, it's obvious to me that it's not going to be used as a storage unit, but as a lakeside cabin. And that's one of my main objections. I really um, think that's uh, n not appropriate for down here on, on, on the water. Um, it, it increases density. It could possibly turn into a, an illegal dwelling unit on the north side of me that has happened, a boathouse that's about the size of the original proposal uh, is, is, uh, has turned into a, a dwelling unit. In fact, it's advertised on, on Zillow as, as, as a living space. Um, and so, you know, maybe Amy and Eric don't have any intentions to make it a dwelling unit. A future owner could, and that concerns me because it's right next to my house. I mean, they're right there. And, um, and, I, and so, I think the zoning, uh, the zoning code is designed to prevent this kind of thing. And so to, to give a variance to build such a structure uh, so close to me is, is really defeating the purpose of the, the zoning uh, code. Um, the other issues with the railroad, um, you know, uh, the railroad cl has claims that they own the land all the way to the lake. And the attorney for the town discussed that at the planning board meeting. And that's you know questionable, and, and owners along the lake would would contest that and say, well, we you know we may we own this, but it's a it's quite a complex legal issue, and um, so we we sort of have a tenuous relationship with the railroad to try to avoid poking the nest because they have such power. So, um, and uh, and I included a letter that was sent a few years ago to Amy about this where they wanted to get all the people to sign leases. It's a yearly lease that would allow them to, you to use what they claim to be their property along the lakefront. Um, so I don't know whether Amy and Eric have such a lease. Um, if they do, I think it'd be important to put it into the public record so we could see whether um, a new structure is allowed to be built, or is just you're just allowed to maintain the existing structures that are there, um, because that has relevance to whether or not they could build a new one. Um, so those are, you know, those are my main concerns, and also just myself and the other two neighbors that have objected are also very concerned about stirring up the railroad, trying to build something on what they claim to be their property. Uh, and, and it causing more problems for the, the entire street because we all get water from from the lake and if and we all have docks and in fact my house is, is right down on the beach which it's been there a house has been there for 80 years and um, you know so anyway it just stirs up a lot of things that we're really concerned about um, and um, so those are those are my main objections and, and if you Please do look at, read the letters that I submitted. Um, they've got all this in there, and um, it, it really uh, means a lot to me. I, this property has been a family for uh, 80 years and or more, and um, I just don't want to see it, it, it changed and, and this turn into a dwelling unit or, or a living space right next to my house. So, okay. thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Is there any comments that you would like to make? After yeah, that? I'd like to respond. Um, you have a letter from us that mm -hmm. looks like this in front of you. This shows the current shed with an old platform above it that we did take out because that was completely rotted. The shed itself is rotting. Um, we, it's mouse infested, we've lost life jackets, it's really not functional space for us and it's not secure any longer so we're concerned that it might flying to the water. Um, I also want to draw your attention to the, the second page. This is our neighbor, the Zerings, who did write a letter objecting to our proposal. This is a structure on their property. It's quite a bit larger than what we're asking to build now. I think actually this is a good example of one that it's insulated space. It has windows. They can store things. They can sit there, you know, if they want. 
Well, they have a heater. We, we're not interested in heat. We, we will have electricity as we, I thought it was required for us to have electricity. We have electricity in the current shed um, and it hasn't been converted to, to living space. That's not our intent. Um, I, I'm a little surprised to hear our neighbor raise this because that family house was actually listed on Airbnb uh, and caused all sorts of problems for the neighborhood. That's, we don't want that. I hear him saying that a future owner might convert it into another property. They can convert our house into a brothel, too. I have no control over what a future owner does. I don't think that's a reason to not grant us the right to, to build. Um, we'll have plywood floors. We're not going to have plumbing. We won't have yeah, a kitchen. I completely agree with him. His, that property to the north that he refers is a, is a boat. It's very large property, and I don't know if they're renting it or not, but it's not within code and not appropriate for the neighborhood. And it's close to 200 square feet. Yeah. It's much bigger. It's close to 200 square feet. We're talking uh, about a 10 by 10 structure. That's what we're asking to build. We're asking to re replace a shed that's rotted out with a shed that's, uh, what, 20? Square feet. We're, we're moving from an 80 square foot footprint to a 100 square foot foot. That's the request you here. Reduced it. Yeah. We, we did. reduced it from 120, which was we were encouraged to ask for bigger, but it's not viable. It's, it is right next to him. His house is by exception on the lake. That, <laughs> that, that was a, a grandfathered structure. So I, I'm sorry his house is right next to it, but he gets the benefit of living on the lake. So one of the questions that I have about it, I think that was a comment that was raised, that was raised earlier. Um, if I'm correct here, somewhere in the description, your property is Lake View. So my understanding of Lake View property is just that. It's but not taxed it's, that way. If you're paying taxes on the property along the lake side, below the railroad track, then you're so those things are, I mean, pay, I mean, I live on the lake too, and we do pay property taxes for that portion of the lake. However, we don't own the land there. No. So I, that's a question I have in terms of uh, the, the whole situation. We were asked by CJ and by the t town attorney to provide a letter explaining the, the, um, our use and our access and we meet the minimum requirements for the town to be able to put a structure replace a structure that's there um, according to our attorney and CJ accepted us and confirmed that um, and they she also made the statement that the town would probably if, if they granted us the variance they would make a, a, a claim on the variance that the town takes no position in terms of the ownership of that particular property but technically because we own the property and, and are the and are the heirs of use we're responsible for removing those stairs or the existing deck or the existing um, uh, shed if we if the railroad to, were to invoke its right to the property because we've had it we've been using it so in effect when we bought the land we bought the shed we bought the shed we bought the stuff on it but we don't own the land but you're absolutely right and that was what we, when we tried to negotiate a, uh, a lease with the railroad, that's what they made absolutely clear to us. We can let you build stuff, we can let you keep stuff, but if you, if we want the land back, we can tell you to take it off and it's got to be removed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you own the things that are done. Yeah. Right. So, the other question that I have is how close to the waterfront is this new proposal? Tell me more about that. So, um, to the waterfront. So underneath, underneath that edge where the, where the concrete is, there is uh, still rubble and stuff under the, under the deck mm -hmm. that is the waterfront. But the deck extends out, um, I think it's 15 by 25 feet, 25 foot wide and 15 feet out towards the lake. Um, the actual waterfront is below okay. the deck. You don't have a seawall there. We don't have a seawall, but we have a lot of rubble that has piled up in the, and yes, no, we do not have a seawall. If the deck were to fail, we would not be able to rebuild the deck because of the changes in the DEC's rules, but we could build a seawall at that point. We don't need a seawall now. I was 
just thinking if you know when I saw your letters from your attorney, um, did you ever? And I don't know because um, just kind of with the railroad owning the land, but if you had like a deed restriction or something in your abstract or title or whatever saying that you weren't going to use that for living space. Is there's there's nothing in there now. You no, mentioned no, no, put I something mean, in there. Put that in there. That would guarantee that somewhere down the road, somebody buys that your house. They can't put something. <coughs> they can't live there. Well, and at this point, we are adding no plumbing, so it is not habitable space. And the closest bathroom on the property is way up the hill at their home. So even if someone were to purchase the property, they couldn't legally put something in there. And they would, of course, have to come before all of you if they wanted to make the adjustments to make it legal. Yeah, it's like 90 steps and about 200 feet. Uh, well, and, and two dwellings on a property that size do not fit within the town property. Right, right. I mean, I mean the, pro the, yeah, the property was was a trailer that had a stick built addition built over it we bought it the addition was crossing property lines and under the under the electrical wires it was totally out of compliance and we brought it all into compliance with a very setback variance for the house up above but otherwise we're we're pretty so straightforward if i'm hearing you right what you're attempting to do or would like to do is replace what you have but move it forward move forward and that eliminates one uh, that eliminates one infraction in terms of being within the side setback, and it just leaves the 30-foot setback as a violation. If we were if we were put in the position of, of having to rebuild exactly on that site, we would have a structure that is in violation of two setbacks. Yeah, except that's, I don't know how old it is, but it may be grandfathered in. Well, I mean, it would be grandfathered in other circumstances, and, and what we lose in that process is it becomes just further back and, and less less useful. We were just looking to make a nicer place to both store stuff in the wintertime and to sit without having to sit out in the sun in the middle of the summer. Because there is literally no real shade. The west side is hot. Yes, it is very hot. And you know, work with a laptop computer or just have a different kind of space to hang out in. We're not looking for living space. So it won't have plumbing, but it will have electricity. Yes, the electricity has been there. There's 220 and 120 service down that. And, um, the electricity is already down. Already there. It was there when we bought the property. So, so I guess the biggest question we're talking about here is replacing what you have in the same location or moving it. Or moving it, yes. Yeah. And can you repeat for me why you don't want to just replace like and kind exactly where it is? Well, um, it's set quite a ways back. It's actually, if we put the door where it is, which is what we would require, the door would be directly under the steps. So we'd have to somehow walk away. We, you know, we, it, it's just very awkward where it sit, where it sits. Bef before the structure, so this is where we made a big mistake. We, there was a basically a 16 foot by 16 foot deck that was built over the shed and there was lots of storage underneath it and people walked across that deck and then they walked down, down steps to the side in front of it. We tore that down not realizing we needed to replace it within a year in order to do it by right and so I thought we had five years we didn't. Okay, so what we're trying to do is to get some of the quality of at least a decent space that's closer to the water. That prior structure came out within about three feet of the of the front of the dock. Um, so one of my concerns tonight is there's only three of us. Right. That means we all have to positively vote in one direction or it's not um, I have some concern that we're seeing a new design tonight. Um, that was I agree not. too, because we're trying to read through everything. To yeah, we we'll catch up today with it, and it's like I just. <clears throat> so, let me throw this out there. But the thought is to keep the public hearing open. Don't close the public hearing. Extend it to next month. Hopefully, we'll have a little bit more time to digest what we have here it'll still allow the neighbors to mm -hmm. present any new information they want to on the new design and the new requirements
request. Um, we'll be hopefully a little bit more clear on exactly what kind of variance we're, we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, I think the variance needs to be reworded. Yeah. Because you're going to design the you know, mm -hmm. height, the elevation, the distances, the whole question. Um, it certainly would uh, allow for some other board members to also uh, attend because if one of us says no, then your variance is done. Mm -hmm. We keep it open, have um, some other board members be able to attend next month, then if one of us is against it, then it might still go. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there are five members? Yeah. Or, yeah. Five. So uh, if, if the board were to deny your variance tonight, it would require a unanimous vote of the board to even rehear it. I understand. And then it would take a second unanimous right. vote of the board to change that decision. Mm -hmm. No, I, and had we realized that this would be a, a skeletal crew tonight, then we might not be here. We were just trying to see if we could move this along in with construction timelines so that we might get something done before the winter. Um, I do appreciate the fact that you've looked at and heard some of the concerns raised mm -hmm. by neighbors and, and came back and, and looked at the design again. Um, I, I think, um, you know, that shows due diligence on your side, which I, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. I recognize the limitations you have. Yeah. Thank you. So. Is the board comfortable with the level of information provided uh, since the application has changed? Uh, I'd like to suggest that the applicant revise their application to reflect the, the current circumstances. And is this board comfortable with the with the plans that you've been given? Um, it, it may be, uh, are you okay with just this sheet? Um, we'd like to see like the front property line. Um, yeah. You know, where the railroads right away is. I think that would be helpful to have, to have it all in one place. So, I like to see where the building is that they're taking out compared to what we're putting it. It's on my level. Okay. So if we if we had a revised drawing that showed your property lines, okay. Probably your you had a sheet that showed us your entire property again, but if you wanted to just give us know the detail as well of so what's happening, mm -hmm. right? The existing property line that would be need requested. Um, your, your neighboring properties as well, not their entire property, mm -hmm. just so we can get a, an idea of how these things sit in relation. Uh, the railroads right away, and where that existing shed is. And if you're able to show the, uh, the lake level and the, the floodplain, I'm fairly certain you're going to wind up needing a uh, floodplain development permit especially since you have electric in this? Uh, when we uh, went through the process earlier to check what it is that we might need, it was indicated that we would not. Okay. Um, I spoke with uh, the DEC, uh, a gentleman in Syracuse, to uh, go through uh, the project. It was as far as the previous project. Um, but uh, the statement from him was that the, uh, the only real issue was whether or not it extended vertically over the mean high water mark, which because from the, the- From the EEC, that's correct, but uh, floodplain development is regulated locally for the National Flood Insurance Program. So we would need to make sure that this development is not occurring within the special flood hazard area, mm -hmm. okay? And if it were, you'll need to comply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we moved it out farther, but it's actually, I mean, the, it's still well above the, it's still well above the, yeah. So what those requirements, that they're not requirements that you stay away from sure. the plane, it's above. That's what I mean. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, we were above, we had issues with, with, um, identifying the floodplain along, along the way, and that was, that was, I think, resolved with this. Yes, the um, the survey map that is uh, filed for this property indicated a a high water line of some sort that just kind of went across the front, which we had originally been using in our first uh, designs, thinking that they had actually determined where that was. 
Um, it seemed to be relatively arbitrary, however, when we explored it. Uh, so uh, my supervisor and I did, as I said, went down with a laser level so that we could get actual measurements sure. of all of those points for you. So if we can get exact distances, we can make a determination on whether or not mm -hmm. we're in that flood hazard area, okay? Okay. And then from there, we can, do, we can find what's called a base flood elevation that things need to be at. And that all comes from a flood insurance study. Right. So that's it, the elevation is for how high the structures are above that? How high the, 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 the bottom floor elevation. Right, and that's what, and that's. There's, there's construction requirements at this board that are going to be concerning it, but right. that's just stuff that you should be aware of. Right, and, we, and even if we just simply replace the existing structure, <clears throat> we would need to be above that. It needs to be. On, a six, on at least 16 inch block. I mean, what we, were, what we understood was that the 16 inch blocks took us above. That's fine. Where you are, yeah. but we yeah. it's a concern, and then yeah. we can then we can go from there. Okay. Yep. Anything? I think I've got it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to ask a question to clarify something, if I could. Sure. Um, the I, I thought I heard um, Eric say that the the new. Um, proposed structure would be smaller than the existing. Is that correct? I said it would be smaller than the original proposed structure. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because the existing shed is 8 by 8. No, it's not. <laughs> well, if you look at the... Well, uh, my I letter dated August 9th, there are photographs that show a tape measure on the building. That can't be disputed. Um, I think what we'll do is we're going to keep the public hearing open right. and next month hopefully we'll have more information and we'll be able to take moving forward from that piece of information that we have. Yeah. Um, you guys can certainly have conversations yeah, as much as you want outside yeah. of this, but I think our role in this, um, we, we need to know what, what we're actually asking for and yep. what we can make a decision on. Um, so at this point, we are just going to not close the public mm -hmm. hearing. Um, do you want some kind of acknowledgement that we're not closing it or we're just not closing it? Um, I can just put it there. That okay. That we're leaving the public hearing open until our September meeting. Um, and at this point, we are done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank, you. Yep. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Yep. Apologize for not um, reading the minutes uh, beforehand. Um, but 